In this episode, we will discuss the hard price drop that happened across the crypto industry, plus lots of news with partner projects and a bit of controversy with Shimmer. All that and more today at IOTA Monthly. Basically, you could say that no investor has been very happy the last month. In that time, IOTA has lost 50% in value, currently trading around 30 cents per MIOTA. And to put that in perspective, that's about the price that I paid in mid-2017 when IOTA was newly available. In the last video, we already went into more detail about the price drop and some of the challenges facing IOTA. The major markets seem to be recovering in the last few days. The crypto market still needs some time, but it also seems to be slowly going up. Do you think we've bottomed, or will things fall further? This month, there were two new exchanges that listed IOTA. Always be careful with new exchanges. I prefer to trade on well-known exchanges, but new ones are always good news. ALB Limited is a German exchange that now offers IOTA. At ALB Limited, you can also trade other things beyond crypto, such as commodities and indices. You are also a partner of a football club. Hmm, let's hope that some of the fans don't give IOTA the red card. As the name suggests, BitOasis is an exchange with the Middle East in mind. Located in United Arab Emirates, they invite people to invest in altcoins, DeFi, Metaverse, and NFT tokens with the leading platform in the Middle East. They say they have over $3 billion in trading volume across seven countries. Welcome to the IOTA family, BitOasis, and ALB traders. Burn or Build Voting for the 50 Terra IOTAs in the IOTA Treasury has started. You can decide directly with your IOTAs what happens next. The options are Burn, which would destroy all 50 Terra IOTA of tokens, reducing the total supply. It is anticipated that this would have minimal impact on price. Or Build which pledges the tokens to be used as an incentive for entrepreneurs and expanding the utility around IOTA. The funds would be governed by a DAO. Right now, about 80% of the votes are for build. Please have a say by voting in the Firefly wallet. The votes are weighted according to the number and length of the voting. The voting runs for about 10 days. IOTA's new governance forum has started in full force. With a Stack Overflow-like look, it's beautiful to look at and easy to use. All functions are intuitive, and it is pleasant to read through the proposals. For everyone interested in the technical details of IOTA, two new white papers were published in early May. Both papers were published in the open source journal Archive. One caveat, this journal does not require peer review. The first is titled, Tangle 2.0, Leaderless Nakamoto Consensus on the Heaviest DAG. This theoretical paper is about the leaderless consensus mechanism of IOTA 2.0, an important step closer to Quartocide. The second white paper is called Reality-Based UTXO Ledger and describes an extended UTXO or unspent transaction output model that provides a solution to the bottleneck problem of blockchains. This solution allows leaderless conflict resolution without requiring a total ordering of events. Both texts are around 30 pages long and very technical. If you want to study them yourself, the links are in the description. This month offers a lot of blog posts. Here is an overview of several. Japan Project NATO. In October 2020, IOTA announced it had partnered on a project initiated by Japanese maintenance-related companies and funded by NATO the New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization. NATO is Japan's largest public management organization and promotes research and development, as well as the deployment of industrial, energy, and environmental technologies. The goal of the project was to develop technology to strengthen the security, longevity, and durability of critical infrastructure assets in Japan and abroad, and test the viability of IOTA as a trust anchor for critical data. That project has now been successfully completed, demonstrating that a private tangle can be used to securely store and transfer sensitive data for power plants, oil refineries, etc. Artificial intelligence will use the data that is stored immutably on the tangle to manage risk-based maintenance, prioritizing the allocation of maintenance resources toward assets that carry the most risk if they were to fail. 
A private or permissioned tangle is a miniature version of the mainnet using pre-selected nodes. Note that this project could also be done with the public tangle and can be expanded without disclosing any sensitive data. Introducing the Zebra IOTA Edge Software Development Kit. The Zebra IOTA Software Development Kit, or SDK, can be used to issue, verify, and manage decentralized, interoperable identities for people, organizations, and devices. Applications include personal information management, trade certificates, decentralized identity for organizations, decentralized device identities, and supply chain credentials. Gaia X for ROMs. Gaia X for future mobility projects have kicked off with 80 partners from the industrial and scientific world working together to develop the groundwork for smart mobility, vehicle technological concepts, and industrial applications. The IOTA Foundation provides its technologies in order to enable trust supporting services for the mobility of the future. IOTA is involved in each of the six sub-projects of the Gaia X 4 ROMs project. We spoke about this in a separate video, which you can check out, and the blog post gives many more details. Energy Consumption of IOTA 2.0 In this blog post, IOTA explores the energy use of IOTA 2.0 by running GoShimmer on a network of 450 Raspberry Pi nodes. Even though removing the coordinator requires more complexity through each node, it is still more energy efficient than Chrysalis, the current network. They also show the energy consumption in comparison to the Bitcoin network and a 1 watt LED. Overall, a theoretical network the size of the current Tingle, with Raspberry Pis, which are very energy efficient, consumes less than half the electricity of a single average German citizen. Compare that to Bitcoin, whose network consumes as much energy as all of South Africa. Lighthouse Discovery Dashboard IOTA has created a simple way to learn from lighthouse projects that are being carried out with partner companies. On the IOTA.org website, under Solutions, there is a new Lighthouse page, which shows how IOTA's features are utilized by a selection of current market adoption cases. Currently, 15 projects are highlighted, and you can see a summary of the project, the role of IOTA, the use cases, the partners, and additional resources. This shows IOTA's confidence in the projects, and allows everyone to compare several key projects using the same metrics. After long consideration and community voting, a new system for the Shimmer Tokens was chosen. The old Shimmer Token is now called a GLOW. A new Shimmer consists of one million GLOW. So a new Shimmer is a million of the old Shimmer. And the old Shimmer is now the GLOW. The value of the tokens you have doesn't change, it's just the denomination. If you had a hundred million Shimmer before, you now have 100 million glow, which is 100 of the new shimmer. Another way of thinking about it is that a shimmer has six decimal places. This helps make the tokens clear, and in my opinion is nicer than using mega shimmer. The old shimmer numbers are still displayed in the Firefly wallet. There is already an important discussion on IOTA's new governance website. 100% of shimmer tokens were distributed to the community. CAPI proposes increasing the initial shimmer supply by 20% to fund utility development on the network. It is similar to the burn or build vote, but in this case nothing is burned but rather added. Some IOTA holders absolutely disagree with this and are frustrated that the promise to distribute all shimmers is not necessarily going to be kept. Acknowledging that as a potential problem, what are the reasons for recommending a supply increase? Cappy writes that other networks have set aside 30 to 50% of their tokens for community and builder incentives. After the start of the incentives in other communities, you can see a clear increase in interest in the network. So to phrase the proposal differently, would you rather keep 100% of your tokens that are having a hard time increasing their value, or 80% of your tokens with a solid price and better prospects for the future? Even if Shimmer has good opportunities, you should take advantage of all available help. 
Ultimately, the community will vote on whether the increase actually happens. After the Shimmer launch, there will be a new, separate Firefly wallet for a while. This is used to simplify the token allocation and to test the new features of Shimmer. As soon as Stardust is launched on the IOTA mainnet, the two Firefly versions will be combined. Swarm is a script that can be used to create a node. Swarm now supports Shimmer nodes. When Shimmer is released, you can use Swarm version 2 to support the Shimmer network. Here are a few websites for you to check out. Updated IOTA Beginner's Guide. This new IOTA website for beginners makes it easy for you to learn about the basic concepts of IOTA. There is a lot on this website. You won't run out of reading material anytime soon. Now, it is in German, but when I open it in Chrome, Google gives me an option with just a right click to translate into English, and the Google Translate works quite well. The Tangle Explorer is an easy way to click through the Tangle. In addition to a visualizer, you can browse the Tangle and select the different networks. IOTA eShop Identity Showcase. This is a demonstration of how a decentralized identity could be used to verify that you are of legal age. So it lets you see how a verifiable credential, like age, can be linked to your identity. Thank you everybody for giving good comments. They're always nice to read. Thank you IOTA Monthly for letting me voice the English versions and thank you for all the hard work you were doing. And maybe I'll continue to voice the English versions. Maybe other people will. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. But we do have one more thing. Right, one more thing. In Panama, eight cryptocurrencies are now accepted as legal tender. These are Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin, XDC Network, Elrond, Stellar, Algorand, and IOTA. Acceptance of these cryptocurrencies is not mandatory, but possible. Above all, companies will decide which currencies they want to accept. Even if IOTA is number 60 in market cap, it says something powerful when the experts in Panama put IOTA next to the other seven currencies, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Mega awesome. Thank you for being here for this episode. Time for me to book a flight to Panama. See ya.